mixed in there. I don't know if that's just like an accident or if they were actually like a part of this wave. But I need your little research bits. Give them to me. Oh, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? All right, I'm going to leave that one alive uh, so that we've got 13 of these right here. I don't know if that's going to be enough. We'll kill him real fast, though. And then we'll probably run back and turn off the waves real quick while we check our tech list. There's going to be one more wave that's coming in hot on our heels, but I'm not really too concerned about it. I want to get the base up and running, and so I kind of want to get all the baseline parts, no pun intended, put together so that we can actually do that. Uh, so we'll come over here. We'll turn off the auto start. We got one more wave coming down. Don't really care too much about that. I do want to get this started up real quick. There we go. So now that that's started... Oh, wow, they made it to the base much, much more rapidly than I expected them to. Yeah, that might be bad. That might not be an ideal situation. I do see the base's health bar going down. Maybe got a little bit overconfident. There we go. All right, so they've been knocked out. Wave is done. Let's get all their research parts real fast and anything else that can be thrown into the inventory. I think I'm full up right now, too. Because these are parts right here that we can loot. And so, unfortunately, let me throw things into the recycler. So, you got to throw those in there. Can I, like, shift-click these? I don't know if I can. Maybe. Control-click, possibly. Ah, you can right-click them in. Okay. Actually, I think I need those. I don't want to break those down. All right. So, we got a few more bits and bobs and parts. And we can pick up these little guys over here. Hoverbot boosters. Dude, if I can make a jetpack... I'll be so happy. Every splat needs his jetpack, man. That's just one of the unwritten rules of life. All right. So we've got goodies. We're over here refining the hell out of this. Uh, let's go ahead and see what tech levels we can get to. So we've got energy storage. Probably going to need that for the laser. We'll get that going. How long is that going to take? Oh, not that long. Just two ticks. All right. Oh, never mind. I'm not sure what happened. It's going to take multiples of ticks. It feeds in like one of these little, I don't know, cell drives or whatever they are, one at a time. All right, and does that get me to the laser battery? It does. All right, give me the laser battery. What's the electromagnet do, by the way? Metallurgy 1. I think that just lets us make storage crates. Power system storage might be a smart idea after this, too, because we're going to go on like a glut of base building after we get these first couple bits and pieces down. Okay, so inside my build menu, what kind of fun new things do I have available? So I have enough stuff for the laser. Let's build one of those. And I'm assuming that the laser is going to have to be controlled by, like, a battery or something. Like, it's going to have to have access to that. There we go. So we got our little turret right there. Sweet, dude. Stays on as long as the device gets power. So the battery is going to require a poisonous plant in order to get our hands on. Luckily, I feel like I saw poisonous plants over here, so that's not going to be like a super hard acquisition. Uh, let's go ahead and run on in here. There we go. They got a little bit of a weird selection area, but you'll find it. There we go. That one didn't. Uh, any more up here? I do need Martian rocks so I can build some like retaining walls around the base to keep it safe. Cool. Facing is maintained, even if I rotate the camera while harvesting. Uh, the character model doesn't freak out. That's a little thing that a lot of games miss with their early, with their kind of early demos, is that when you're attached to an object like this harvesting and you turn around, like the torso gets all deformed and annihilated because they're trying to harvest the rock and look around at the same time. All right. As it turns out, you get 100 batteries for every one of these things you have right here. It's a lot of batteries. Like, it's actually maxing out the storage over here. I just want to place my turret. That's all that I want to do. I just want to put my little turret gun down. All right, so turret gun right there. All right. I think it's got a battery. I think it's good to go. Oh, I can power it on and I can power it off. Okay, so I can control these with switches probably at some point too. Ooh, that'd be fun. Let me get another wave. I want to see how the laser does. I want to see how it does out here. Like, does it automatically track? Like, what does it do? Let's find out. 
little gun right here. All right, little gun. I turn you back on. Oh, they got little roly boys, dude. They got little roly polies. Uh, it does not look like the laser aims, actually. Interesting. I thought that it would, like, track enemies and, like, pick and choose who it was going to be firing at. Maybe I've done something horribly wrong. I don't know. It's possible that I rigged this thing up improperly. I mean, I think if I just move it to the left, though, they'll be moving, like, directly into the beam for the most part. What happens if I, like, knock them into it? Oh, no, dude, they're shooting my base. These guys have, like, little glasses on, dude. They got, like, little Rocksteady and Bebop glasses. Oh, and they actually, like, move around to avoid your shots and stuff, too. Like, they reposition. Interesting. All right, well, I don't know exactly what the laser does. All right, I thought that it was going to track the enemy. I thought that it was going to do stuff. Uh, I think we could probably get away with picking it up. Oh, never mind. I'm going to be full up on robo parts. I forgot. We just did, like, robo slaughter. Wanton robo slaughter. All right, let's throw all of our wanton robo slaughter in here real fast. So that it purifies into, like, other things that I can use for building and whatnot. All right, looks good. So this guy right here, is his battery actually going down? I wonder if the battery is only, it only really goes down. It says it's stage zero, too, so maybe we can, like, upgrade it at some point. I'm going to pick you up. I'm just going to, like, scoochinate you to, like, right here. And, like, maybe they'll fly across it this time. I don't know. We've got a bunch of scrap. Let's play around with the building for a second. Uh, so we can get the scrap roofs right, or we can get the scrap walls right here. Putting some of those in to protect the base seems like a pretty good idea. So I'm just going to queue up a whole bunch of these so that I can slap them down wherever I don't want the aliens to pass. Uh, that way we can, like, hold our own, basically. I don't know how I put down the floorboards. It doesn't appear as though I have the floorboards right now. It's probably something that I have to research. So I'll probably take a look in a second and see if I can find that. Oh, the scrap build panels don't actually build walls. They build on the floor. Gotcha. Oh, and you can swap between the two as you desire to do so. Okay, yeah, let's get the, the base inside like a little protective encasement here. Like, I'll leave this open right here. Doesn't look like we can get that close, though. Okay. Yeah, looks good to me. Like... I'm all right with what we've got going on, like our own little kind of like contained area. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's see how they do. Let's pull in the robots for one more wave. I mean, if nothing else, it should probably keep them back off of our stuff. And it looks like like breaking this stuff down and rebuilding the way that you want doesn't really cost that many resources. I wonder if they repath now that I have a wall down. Yeah, so it's like a static trap. Okay. So, like, it's one of those things that... You probably want a couple right in front of the doorway here. I don't know if my base heals after the wave is over either, but, man, there's a lot of you guys, aren't there? Okay. I welcome the inclusion of your parts. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to get a little bit more developed with regards to our tech level. And, like, the stuff that we have out for traps. Like, I saw landmines in the research, and I saw spike traps, and I saw some other stuff. And so, anyways, oh, this man's stuck. This man's lost. Okay, a couple of goodies laying around. Does everything heal after the wave? It looks like it does. I saw him shoot that wall a couple times. Still a few parts out here that I can't fit inside my inventory. But I do think, realistically, we're going to need, like, a couple of laser turrets, like, right here, just blocking this doorway so that if they try to come through, they get hit. I don't know. Uh, let's throw those in there, throw those in there, get those all cooking nice and hot, and then we'll go grab the rest of the refuse that's laying around from the debris field. I don't see any more bits and bobs around, so I think we got it all. All right, so let's take that right there, and then it looks like we've got a glass lens. I'm going to need some more of these diodes. I don't know where I was getting these diodes from. I'm assuming that I was getting them from... 
I'm guessing I was getting them from the blue robots because they don't seem to be coming up now. That's my guess anyways, but I do need a few more turrets, I think, and a few more things. Now, luckily, we have research, so let's go ahead and see what we can unlock here with what we've got going on. There's a scrap launcher turret, so we can get electromagnets. Okay, so this creates a strong magnetic field with an electric current. can be crafted at the craft bench. Okay, good to know. Dude, I have almost 50 of those. I didn't realize how many I had. All right, all right, all right. It's good, it's good. Uh, scrap launcher turret sounds pretty cool. And then there's spike traps, too. Let's get the scrap launcher turret. Curious what this bar means down here where it says self-worth. Kind of, like, interested in what that means. Uh, anyways, we've got, like, apparently I learned how to make a robot. I've got all kinds of traps now. I've got a shotgun. Uh, we've unlocked, like, a bunch of things, okay? And so it's possible we may be able to manufacture something out here. Uh, if we had the wires, we have the gun parts, we have the scrap. So, sure, let's make a shotgun. Looks like it's going to take a minute for that to get finished off. So there's obviously probably other tasks that we can undertake here. Go back to the full item display. Shotgun ammo, probably not a bad idea. Yeah, max it out. Why not? Wait, what are those? Weak explosive powder? How do I make that? Weak explosive powder. That uh, requires scrap and magnesium. Oh, we can't make the bullets for it just yet. All right. And then it takes wires in order to make the electromagnets. Okay. Yeah, I got to get some more light-emitting diodes, or laser-emitting diodes. That's what we're going to need pretty badly here. But I did get my shotgun, so we can, like, kind of see what that looks like. Apparently, it came with bullets. Definitely a little bit of a wide spread on it, uh, but it is shotgun. It's shotgun-like. Uh, so anyways, like, this is pretty much like the core of the game that they're playing around with for right now. Uh, I think it's probably a decent idea if we jump into the pre-milled base. Uh, so they, uh, they did a pre-build base that can show you what's possible, basically, for, like, packs. And, like, their their exposition there. And so, anyways, um, I think it might be a good idea to just kind of... Oh, wow. Shotgun is actually kind of dope. I did not expect the shotgun to be this sick. Dude, the shotgun doesn't care. Dude, a video game with a good shotgun? Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about, developer. Okay, you've won over my heart. You designed a video game that has a shotgun that doesn't suck butt, and I appreciate that. You have given me hope and a better tomorrow. Uh, we've wiped those guys out, but what do you say? I think it's a good idea that we go over to the pre-build base, and we just take a look at that, and we kind of see how that functions. Oh, they came from multiple directions this time? Lame. All right, so we're going to have to figure that out. Fair enough. Uh, you guys get off my land. I demand you get off my land. This is my land, my property, robots. There we go. Robots have been vanquished and we've completed the wave. Okay, so here we are inside the pre-built base that they used at PAX to show off the game. Uh, basically, the developer explained this to basically the general public as like, uh, effectively, when you're making a game like this that has like a long runway to getting to the cool stuff, when you make a demo, you want it to put the player directly in the cool stuff. You know what I mean? And so having a look around right now, they've got scrap launchers. It looks like they've got turrets and things around. Let's trigger a wave and see what happens. Ooh, dude, what is this? Hold on. Oh, dude, I've got a machine gun? Yeah, bro, that's what's up. Okay, let's start a wave. Let's let's see how apparently 2,700 waves. Yeah, that looks like a lot of robots. Oh, they're coming from that way, too. Okay. I'm just going to kind of like open fire here and like I kill what I kill. Oh, they've got little robots. Oh, dude, there's so many more coming. Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Take this game and divorce it from any sense of scale or realism. Just I want this game to be absolute mayhem, dude. By like wave 20, I want this game to effectively be the opening scene to like saving Private Ryan with robots, dude. It's just, it's got to be nuts. I think those guys are stuck in my wall. I don't think we're actually, oh, there's like, oh, they're coming from this way too? Oh, God. Okay, oh, they broke my wall down. They're coming from everywhere. Okay, so there's like spike traps over here that are like spiking them up. We've got turrets that actually do track enemies. 
Okay, so we've got turrets that do track enemies once they're actually on the interior of the base. Good. I'm just, I'm kind of helping at this point. That's about it. Dude, this is a lot of robots. I don't even know how many we've killed. The slaughter has become so absurdly over the top. Dude, look at all the parts laying everywhere. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. I can see how, yeah, developer, very, very good foresight on making the con demo put you straight into the action. Absolutely fantastic choice. Now, in the case of my channel, I'm doing impressions content, so I want to see, like, a little bit of the buildup. And then here at the end of the video, I felt like since we spent most of the video on buildup, it would be only fair to show people what the after buildup looks like when you're, like, 15 or 20 waves in. Um, this guy's, like, in the wall right now. I cannot get him. Oh, I got him right there. There we go. We done got at him. We done got at him, chat. We done got at him. All right. Uh... Says there's one enemy left. He's got to be stuck somewhere. All right, I found it, him. He was hiding back behind a wall over here. Uh, but how many enemies did it say were in that wave? I didn't even look. Let's trigger another one real fast because we're kind of at the end of the video where I'm about to do like my, where I'm about to do. There looks like there's a bunch of buildings too. So he's got like a filament spooler. Looks like there's a big blast furnace. So these are upgraded blast furnace over here. He's got like a power grid over on this side and he's walled off the entire thing to make sure nothing sneaks in through the back. We've got an assembler over here. Uh, the material processor is still doing its thing. I mean, honestly, keep in mind, this is a tech demo. This is an alpha tech demo. And there's already this much stuff inside of it. This is nowhere near what I think the final product is probably intended to look like. Like, this is just kind of what he's showing off at conventions and whatnot right now and just sort of, like, playing around with. But honestly, pretty cool. I mean, I think the scale is what's going to sell this game. Uh, 208 enemies. Wait, 54 enemies alive. Let's watch the number. I want to see how many of them end up in this wave. Okay, it's up to 72. 75. I don't even care if they kill the base. 94. I just want to see to 110. Okay. The amount of robots continues to grow. Is that the extent of the wave right there? I think that's the extent of the wave. So there was a hundred robots in this wave, which is actually quite a lot. If you consider the graphical fidelity of the game and all the lighting and the shaders and everything else too, like honestly, the fact that the game has only lost like four off the frame rate right now with a hundred robots calculating like paths and AI and everything else, uh, actually kind of impressive. Like, oh, the number did jump up again. There's 130 of them now, 150 of them now, dude. This is so sick. Okay. And as a fan of things that really ratchet up the numbers when it comes to, like, enemy engagements and whatnot, I'm actually really, really enthused about this. It looks and feels good. And you've got to remember that this is just an alpha demo. Like, the developer made this just to gauge if there would be any public interest. And so, anyways, like, yeah, I would say that I think there's probably going to be members of the public that are going to be interested in this absolutely crazy robot slaughter that you can set up with your Home Alone style traps all over the place. Yeah, I could see that. And so anyways, this is Hostile Mars. Pretty, pretty good first impressions. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Thank you for hanging out. And I will catch you all when we regroup tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Hostile Mars. This is a game the developer sent over the demo, actually. He got some traction at PAX. He ended up winning, like, a contest for, like, promising games and basically got, like, his whole trip sponsored to go over there and whatnot. And so, anyways, after that, he decided to send over a demo that he wanted to have checked out by yours truly. So, in fact, that's what we're going to do here today. I played it around with the game for about an hour last night. I thought it was kind of interesting. And so this is Hostile Mars. It is a base defense game. You build a base, and then you defend it from endless waves of robots uh, and... It's presented from a third-person perspective. You've got guns. You run around. You shoot things. Daka, daka, daka. 
all that kind of fun stuff, but there's also kind of resource processing. A little bit of a Factorio vibe in there, maybe a little tiny bit of like a Satisfactory vibe as well, where there's like production lines and things like that that you're going to need in order to get your base ready for like the bigger, beefier waves as the game goes on. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in today for about 30 minutes. This will have edits in it, so I'm sorry about that, but there is resource gathering and whatnot. And I'm just going to clip all that stuff out so that we can maintain a certain level of momentum as we go forward with the video. But that having been said, you can find a link to see the game down below. You can wishlist it there. I'll have that for you in the description. And then on top of that, you can also take a look down there for links to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and start it off because we've got limited time and we've got ground to cover. Let's get this thing a loading. Okay, fair enough. Everyone else is dead. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. I don't think we can loot anything around here. I don't want to dig around in anybody's prison pocket anyways to see if I can get some fun loot. And then we'll just kind of like move on and out. There's a couple of crates over here that we can mess around with. It's got a platform inside of it. And I'll show you how we build with that in just a second. We also got some gun parts and some ammo. If you want to build things, you just click them from inside of your inventory and bam, bam, bomb. There you go. Modularity. Modularity and building, my friends. Uh, we also have a gun. It goes pew, pew, pew. I feel like it could have a little bit more kick, a little bit more punch, a little bit more crackle to it. But, you know, it's functional. Uh, we also come equipped with sturdy shins and thighs that don't take damage from jumping down mountains. So there you go. We took like a little bit of damage, but that's okay. It'll buff off. Uh, we've got to interact with the home base. Let's do it. All right, so we've interacted with the home base. Uh, we got to find nearby energy cells in order to power up the base. Uh, the map is kind of small for right now. I was playing around with it, and I think I hit the edges of it while I was playing the game. But that having been said, uh, there's bases and things that are kind of scattered around. Uh, that you can pick up objects from, so like this storage box right here. Uh, this game is all about salvaging, actually. You don't really find anything that you can flatly use, like straight out of a crate a lot of the time. All of it has to go through processing. So like you need to find like a scrapper or like a recycler, and you break all this stuff down, and it'll turn into other stuff that's like baseline materials you can use to build. Uh, there are some power cells right there, so that's good. I don't know how long those are going to last, but we have them. Occasionally, there's not going to be crates. There will be just stuff laying on the ground and random. Randomly, you can loot that. So, like, I couldn't loot the solar panels over here, but, like, I'll show it to you when we get to another spot. Sometimes there's things laying around that are lootable that aren't necessarily inside of containers. Another computer and a spring. Okay, I'll take that. And then we've got some more energy cells and gun parts. Nice. I don't know if that's going to be enough energy cells to power this thing on up, but we're going to swing on over here. We're going to take a look and see if we can get it working. Uh, let's throw these things on it. I, I got stuck on a pipe. All right, so we can throw those in there. And apparently there's hostiles inbound. So here comes our first wave of robots. They've come to say hello. They just want to give us like a little handshake with their actuators. Don't worry about it. All right, let's go see if we can find these dudes. They're coming down the hill right now. Love that dust effect that gets kicked up like a drone flying low over like a dusty basin. Looks really, really good. Uh, okay, that's one robot down. That's another robot down right there. I'm just going to fire wildly down the corridor. And there you go. We've defeated our first wave of robots. Uh, the fun thing about this game, one thing that's like really, really cool is all the parts on the robots. Like when you destroy them and they break apart, they're actually lootable. Like you can pick up all the little robot parts. And in fact, you're supposed to because these little guys right here in the top left-hand corner are how you advance your tech tree and get further on into the game. And then the rest of them are going to be available for processing, basically, so that you can turn them into uh, materials for building things. So let's go ahead and open up the tech tree since that's what it wants us to do next, and we will take a look at it. Uh, we've got scrapping over here. Uh, we can build ourselves a blast furnace if we have one of the red robot parts. We do. Uh, so we'll start that real fast so that we can get our blast furnace. There it is. We now have a blast furnace, and it looks like we can also build a wall if we want to. Uh, so we can learn welding one. The other thing we can do is with 80 of the... Ow! Hey, am I getting shot? Hey, 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 relax! Apparently there's a rogue robot over here that wanted the smoke. He wanted to bring it. Oh, there's another one. 
Shooting feels okay. Impact looks pretty good, and I like the explosions off some of the robots as well. Uh, one thing that I can't stress to you enough is how huge the enemy waves get in this game. Go ahead and do yourself a favor, and maybe I'll show it with the pre-build base at the end of the video. Uh, but anyways, do yourself a favor and go look at the screenshots for this game that the developer has out for, like, the late game fights, dude. And it's like an ocean a literal ocean of robots that are coming towards your base. I have no idea how it's going to perform at that level, and I don't even know if that's included inside the confines of the demo that he distributed, but it's pretty cool. Not gonna lie to you. Uh, we gotta go to our crafting bench now, and we need to make a scrap blast furnace. Uh, we need 15 scrap segments, and it looks like we need an energy cell to do that. So what I'm gonna do, the fastest way to do this is just gonna be to trigger a wave. Uh, you have full control over the waves. Uh, you can tell them when to come. You can tell them when you don't want them to come. On top of that, you also have the ability to just chain the waves. Uh, there's a little setting in there where the waves will just come one after another until you feel like your base has finally made it to the point where it can't hold anymore. There we go. Drop you. Drop you. Didn't get him. I do like the way they tumble and spin from the impact of the gunshots, too. That's kind of a, a cool little thing. So we got an energy cell right there. We got some storage drives. I don't think we picked up any more of the scrap metal thingies. Uh, so we're going to have to go find some segments around. Luckily, there's like a little duty pile over here we can play around with. Uh, so let's see if this duty pile is a duty pile of fortuitousness or a duty pile of depression. Uh, let's go ahead and see. So we've got some scrap over here. And we can actually mine this right here. Uh, we have like a big hammer that your character will break out. And there you go. Uh, you can pick all those things up. Perfect. A little rough on the animation right there, but I think it can be cleaned up fairly easily. What I would do is have it kind of like while you're... We'll do it again. So while you're harvesting right here, give them a little bit more of an... Well, they actually have the arc. They swing out, but as they come towards the character, have the size of the little scrap module shrink down and go microscopic and disappear basically right as it gets to our butt cheeks. Uh, that way it looks like we're storing all the scrap inside of our prison pocket because... You know, when you're in a deep space exploration protection type situation, there's no other place I'd rather keep my goodies. Just shove them on in there. Scrap computer. We've got a scrap metal pole. We've got a few more of those guys right there. All right, we can make our blast furnace. Uh, let's get back on over here. God, would you look at that sky? The skybox in this game just looks absolutely fantastic. Like, using those asteroids right there, those like, using the asteroid belt right there, uh, to accentuate depth was a really, really good call. Because otherwise the skybox would look like any other skybox. But just the existence of that asteroid belt right there really lends the game a really fantastic sense of distance, basically. Looks good. Uh, let's craft this blast furnace. All right, so blast furnace. We'll insert the stuff. There it is. Blast furnace is being manufactured. It's going to take it a second. Just, you know, do, 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 do. There we go. Ding. It's done. Uh, now we need to put down our scrap furnace so that we can break down things. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this over here. And with the G key, we can rotate it. I think that's the front right there. Can I put it on this little paddock over here? I'm going to put it on this little paddock right here. There we go. Perfect. And then inside the blast furnace, uh, we can make scrap metal by taking those same parts we use to manufacture the blast furnace and just kind of throwing them in there. And as you can see, they're all going to get slowly converted into raw scrap metal uh, that we can use for all kinds of construction and building. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is it wants me to collect rock nodes to get materials. So I'm going to go out and do that. The rock nodes look like this right here. I am getting a considerable amount of graphical tearing going on. Uh, and in fact, I did have to swap recording programs a couple of times just due to the game. It's weird. The game seems to swap between unlocked and locked frame rates, and it was ruining recordings. And so eventually I found a program that didn't mind. But anyways, V-Sync would fix all of that because, like, it would just, like, it does have a frame rate lock. That's the thing. It's, like, inside the options, the game does have a frame rate lock. I'm just not super sure. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe the game just disagreed with my recording software. I don't know. Either way, though, I'm getting a lot of tearing right now visually. Uh, and so, anyways, that means that the visual display is out of sync with the refresh rate of my monitor. And uh, having a little bit of V-Sync would help clean that up and make it look a little bit better. Not a major problem, but just a little thing that I'm noticing. All right, so let's get some of these rocks, and then we'll go back to base. There's a bunch of little good details in here when you're fighting the robots, too, like the flyers. A little thing that I noticed is when the flyers discharge their gun, uh, they've animated the flyers such that when their gun goes off, the recoil makes them fly backwards and roll slightly. 
uh, and it like breaks their momentum effectively. That's actually a really, really good little detail right there that makes the robots feel a little bit more alive and kind of implies the power of the weapons that they're trying to blast you with. Uh, so we've got a material processor over here. The material processor is basically a smelter. Uh, so we can take these rocks right here and throw them on in. We can take these rocks right here and throw them on in. Okay, or I can just click the max button. That's fine. That's, that's cool. Uh, it's going to convert those into iron, basically. And then later on, we're going to be able to take this iron and we're going to be able to convert it into ingots as part of our production process.